Hi, I'm Ariel Klepper here at Sinai Innovations, and I'm here with our first speaker of the day, Admiral Moore. Admiral Moore, we're here today talking about team science. You work with teams under moments of extreme pressure. How do you teach and prepare people to handle high pressure situations and still work well as a team? This is a very evolutionary process, and it takes months and months and months of training together, <clears throat> basically starting, I would say, the crawl, walk, run phase. But you have to just keep on training, training, vetting those out that don't meet the standards and keep on pushing the level of competency higher and higher and higher. So you challenge them more and more, and as you go along, you're going to hit hurdles such as leadership issues or teamwork or teammate performance. But slowly as you get through those, sometimes you got to let some people go or you need to hit the, the issue. You'll develop trust amongst your teammates and amongst the leader, and eventually your level will just rise to what you need. How do you help to develop that trust amongst members of the team, in both you and each other, knowing that they're going to have to depend on each other in high-stress situations? First of all, I always say, it, for SEAL leaders, it's much easier to be a good SEAL leader if you're a good SEAL first. Okay, so you really have to have the traits down to do it. Then you have to lead it. But the second thing is, a lot of the folks in the team, or in our case, the men in the team, are looking at the leader. He has to uphold the standards, the minimum standards. When he doesn't have the courage to cut away or to fix those, those who are not performing the standard, he will lose confidence from his men. Meanwhile, everyone develops trust in each other as they perform and they can see that, they can, that each guy is capable of doing what they're supposed to do. Because the ultimate level of trust for us is trusting in your teammate to take care of you, in, in worst case, and likewise. And so that there is no probably higher level of trust. And once again, it takes a long time. And... There can be a lot of hiccups on the way, but ultimately it's based upon everyone watching each other's performance. There's also another thing that we do. We do a lot of camaraderie building. So we do a lot of events together. They could be working out, they, you know, in the obvious training events. Um, we could do ocean swims together, okay? Um, and with those, they're not always, outwardly they may look like a good physical fitness exercise. The truth of it is, for me, it's a really good team building exercise. Fantastic. And one last question for you. Obviously, interpersonal interactions are a huge part of the team. What role does technology play? How does the development of new technology improve cohesiveness of the team and success going forward as a unit? We have a lot of technologies that we're using that are pretty known th throughout, especially on the battlefield. But I would tell you, nothing takes place, takes the place of the personal interaction, technology or not, the personal interaction of a leader with his men. There's, there's extroverts and there's introverts, but there's no such thing as a good introverted leader. There's certainly a good leader that's introverted, but you cannot introvertedly lead. So my point is, technology will not take the place of people leading people. That's about leadership, not management. Now, management, there's all kinds of tools to increase or improve the, the efficiency of the processes, such as video teleconferences, all kinds of linking of the organization, flattening the organizations, but you can never take the place of actually leading people. And that's a personal interaction that must take place constantly. Great. Thank you so much, Admiral Moore, for again reinforcing the importance of person-to-person -person interaction and teamwork. At Sinai Innovations, Ariel Klepper. Thanks a lot.